The Cyber's type is notorious in modern Yu-Gi-Oh for its brutally efficient link-based strategy, so it may come as a surprise to you that it's also home to a variety of unplayably awful cards. In this list, we'll explore the worst Cyber sponsors in the game and explaining what makes them so bad. And gatekeeping number 10 spot is You're Finished, a level 10 Cyber's trap monster with 3,000 attack and defense that can be activated and summoned from your spell trap card zone during a turn where 10 or more cards and effects have been activated. Once it's summoned to your field as an effect monster, it can destroy all cards your opponent controls in response to any card or effect your opponent activates as a soft once per turn. After which, it then sets itself back into one of your spell and trap card zones. This card's effect to completely destroy your opponent's field is incredible. Most board wipes that remove both spells and traps are reciprocal, meaning they wipes your own board as well. So exclusively wiping your opponent's cards is a premium effect amongst premium effects. Despite this, Your Finished has two primary issues that prevent it from seeing competitive play as a card that punishes your opponent for performing large combos. First is its activation condition, which requires 10 or more cards and or effects that have been activated during a single turn. While this isn't an uncommon occurrence in Yu-Gi-Oh, what's important about it is that most competitive decks that walk into Your Finished activation condition will often set up a monster negate of some kind before their fifth summon in order to play around Nibiru the Primal Being. Since combo-heavy decks are already expecting powerful monster effect interruption early and often, your finish will typically end up being negated by the various cards already being played in order to prevent the powerful effects of various powerful format staples from resolving. The fact that your finish is a trap monster also prevents it from being useful when going second, which is when you would most often want to use this kind of board wiping effect. The ability to immediately be played from your hand on your first turn is why board-breaking cards like Dark Ruler No More and Evenly Matched are such popular side deck staples since they allow you to weaken or completely remove your opponent's board before committing to your own plays when you're going second. Having to wait a turn to activate your finish after setting it completely kills its viability as a going second option, even before taking into account its activation requirement. So what about as a sideboard option for going first? Unfortunately, its existence as a trap monster also hurts it here, since it gives your finish an additional weakness to spell and trap card removal which players will often side into during games 2s and 3 in anticipation of various powerful floodgates that are currently legal. Despite its plethora of weaknesses, your finish is still more likely to be useful than the rest of the cards on this list, preventing it from ranking any higher than number 10. And building into number 9 is Deflect Compiler, a level 3 monster that can, once per turn, place a defect counter on itself to prevent you from taking damage from an opponent's card effect. Then, once per turn as a quick effect, you can remove a defect counter from Defect Compiler, to give a cyber sponsor control 800 attack until the end of the turn. Defect compiler's effect to prevent you from taking damage from an opponent's card effect might be convenient in certain circumstances, but burn damage is rarely a concern of game winning importance. However, in the event that a match is taking a long time and you're going first in the best of three environment, defect compiler could come in clutch by saving you from a card effect like Ghost Morn or Moonlight Chill should your opponent sideboard it in trying to net an easy win. This, however, is a best of all possible world scenario. In reality, effect damage is such a rare effect in modern Yu-Gi-Oh that outside of niche situations, its effect is likely to never come up. In fact, the best way to use Defect Compiler after normal summon it would be to actually use it as a link material for a better Cyrus monster. Or even better, by playing a different monster entirely and leaving it in your binder. And at number 8, we have Prompthorn, a level 1 monster that can, as a hard once per turn, tribute a level 4 or lower Cyrus monster to special summon any number of Cyrus normal monsters from your deck or graveyard, whose total levels equal the tributed monster's level on the field. But those monsters are banished during the end phase. At first glance, Prompthorn seems like a crazy card that reads Summon 4 Monsters from your deck, similar to the Agent of Creation Venus. However, this card's flaws begin to show up upon further inspection. The first of which begins that in order to summon 4 monsters, you would have to have 4 valid targets for it to summon. Unfortunately, Protron is the only level 1 Cyber's normal monster in the game, restricting you to a maximum of 3 level 1 targets for Prompthorn. This limits a maximum value Prompthorn to either summoning 3 Protrons or summoning 2 Protrons and a level 2 monster. On the topic of normal monsters, all normal monsters are considered to be non-effect monsters or monsters without effects. While you would expect a Cybers monster to support Link summoning, Link monsters in Yu-Gi-Oh typically require effect monsters as materials in order to summon. While you can often convert non-effect monsters such as tokens and normal monsters into effect monsters with cards like Link Spider and Link Rebo, Doing so requires additional extra deck space that Cyber Stacks would rather use to play other cards. In addition to the extra deck commitment needed to accommodate normal monsters, Prompthorn can't summon monsters from your hand if you happen to draw them. 
This turns your already effectless targets from bad draws into garnets that can actually ruin whatever combo might be trying to perform if they end up in your hand. While some Nora Monster Link decks have seen mild competitive success in the past, the tipping point that turns Promptthorn from decent to unplayable is that it has to attribute a monster as cost for its effect on top of having a hard once per turn. To compare that with a good card, the Agent of Creation Venus, a fairy monster which only requires you to pay 500 life points to summon a Mystic Shine Ball from your deck as many times as you'd like, Promptthorn is a two card combo starter that instantly loses to Ash Blossom and Joy of Spring, and a typing filled to the brim with some of the best one card starters in the game. This makes Promptthorn a worse card than the alternatives, both in and out of the Cybers typing. But it's saved from a higher place on this list only by virtue of being a normal summonable Cybers monster. And swimming in the number 7 spot, we have Marine Cess Crown Tail, a level 5 monster with 2300 defense and two effects with hard ones per turns. First, as a quick effect in the hand, during damage calculation of a battle between two monsters, you can send one other Marine Cess card from your hand to the graveyard to special summon Marine Cess Crown Tail from your hand and have any damage you take from that battle. Second, if Marine Cess Crown Tail is in your graveyard at the start of the damage step, you can banish it to prevent you from taking battle damage equal to the total link rating of the Marine Cess Link monster in your graveyard times 1000. As an archetype, Marine Cess's game plan revolves around link climbing and equipping it with various boss monsters with smaller Marine Cess link monsters using Marine Cess Battle Ocean in order to augment or enable the effects of the boss monsters. Most main deck Marine Cess monsters are designed to help you link climb into those bosses, all while searching other pieces of interaction along the way through your combo. Marine Cess Crown Tail is an active detriment to the goal, since it's not even normal summonable without a tribute and requires Marine Cess monsters to discard in order to special summon. Ignoring the discard attached to its activation requirement, Marine Cess Crown Tail's effect as a battle-oriented hand trap is also borderline useless. Summoning a defense position body blocker and reducing the damage you might take from a battle isn't that useful, especially since it doesn't protect the monster that's battling from being destroyed. Even if you circumvent its hand effect entirely by sending it to the graveyard during your opponent's combo, preventing battle damage only benefits you from a losing position. This is why Marine Cess prefer to play Marine Cess Basila Lima as a one of card to dump to the grave, since its banish effect to protect a Marine Cess monster from being destroyed by card effects instead helps retain your board presence, preventing you from ever reaching a losing position in the first place. Overall, Marine Cess Crown Tail's utility is outright useless to the archetype it's beholden to but could technically come up in a real game. And slashing to number 6 is Deco Talker Extended, a Link 3 monster with 2300 attack that requires two or more effect monsters as Link materials to summon. Its name is always treated as Deco Talker on the field, and just like the original, it gains 500 attack for each monster it points to. Unlike the original, Deco Talker Extended can activate in its fact to allow it to make a second attack if a monster it points to is destroyed by battle or otherwise sent to the graveyard during your battle phase. While attacking twice isn't a bad effect by any means, the conditions under which Deco Talker Extended gains a second attack is what makes it such a bad card. While ideally, you would activate its effect to gain a second attack by destroying an opponent's monster that it points to, this only results in a maximum of 4600 damage if attacking an attack vision monster with zero attack. For the investment required to make a Link 3 monster, there will almost always be a better alternative. In Cyber's decks, you would always rather make Transco Talker to revive either Update Jammer or Splash Mage in order to make a 5300 attack Axis Code Talker. And in non Cyber's decks, might find yourself using Selene Queen of Mass Magicians or Crusadia Equimax in order to perform a similarly game ending play. Requiring your opponent to play into your zone gimmick prevents Deco Talker Extended from providing consistent damage output. And there's simply no reason to ever make it in a format where Axis Code Talker exists. And plugging into number 5 is Striping Partner a level 4 monster that cannot be normal summoned or set and must be special summoned by its own effect. You can special summon this card from your hand if the effect activation of a monster you control is negated, except during the damage step. Then, as a hard once per turn, when Striping Partner is special summoned, you can target one level 4 or lower Cybers monster in your graveyard and special summon it. This card's effect on summon is actually quite good since Cyber stacks love to repeatedly recycle their main deck monsters while link climbing. The unfortunate part that makes this card unplayably bad is actually its summoning condition, and restriction for exactly that aforementioned reason. Striping Partner finds itself in an unusual situation comparable to the Mass Heroes, where it cannot be special summoned from the graveyard, since it can only be special summoned by the effect of a particular card. However, in the case of Striping Partner, this also prevents it from being able to be normal summoned, turned into a brick if you can't activate its effect. The activation requirement for Striping Partner's effect to special summon itself is equally as bad as this restriction, since it requires the activation of a monster effect that you control to be negated. The devil is in the details here, since it requires the activation of the effect to be negated, and not the effect itself. 
Stripping Partner won't be able to be activated if the effect of Monty Control is negated by an opponent's hand trap like Effect Failure or Infinite Impermanence, because those cards only negate effects and not activations. Activation negations are much more premium effects and often come with hefty downsides or difficult summon requirements. It's also unfortunate that Striving Partner only summons a level 4 Cybers monster instead of any Cybers monster, since your opponent is likely to hold on to their more powerful negates for the effects of various strong Cybers link monsters. At the end of the day, preparing for your opponent to interact with one of your monsters in such a specific way is a gamble that Cybers decks just don't need to take. And fumbling to number 4 is Capacitor Stalker a level 5 monster with 2,000 attack and 2 effects with hard ones per turns. First, on normal summon, you can target another Cyrus monster you control and give it 800 attack while Capacitator Stalkers face up on the field. Then, if this card is destroyed and sent to the graveyard from the monster zone, each player takes 800 damage. Overall, it's not hard to see what makes Capacitator Stalker a bad card. Since it only gains its attack boosting effect on normal summon, accessing this effect requires a tribute due to Capacitor Stalker being a level 5 monster. If it could target itself, its boosted attack would actually contest even two tribute monsters in a total attack of 2800. But since it can only target other cyber monsters you control, this effect becomes infinitely worse, since it actually requires it to have two monsters in the field in order to make use of its effect. Boosting a monster's attack by an amount as low as 800 isn't remotely close to being worth the amount of setup and investment required to summon and make use of the card. For the same price of 3 Cyrus monsters and your normal summon, that being 1 in hand and 2 in the field, you could easily have made Axis Code Talker use an update jammer to attack twice for over lethal and have follow up in case something goes wrong. Then, to top it off, Capacitator Stalker's effect of burn is equally as pointless as its attack boost since it only triggers upon being destroyed by card effect and sent to the graveyard. This prevents it from even being useful as a way to quickly weave in some burn damage in your combo at the end of a long game, since it won't activate us into the graveyard as a link material. And casting spells at number 3 is Cyber's Magician, a level 7 ritual monster with 2500 attack and 2000 defense. While Cyber's Magician is on the field, any damage you take is halved, and while you control a link monster, your opponent cannot target any of your monsters except Cyber's Magician for attacks or with card effects. Then, if Cyrus Magician battles a Link Monster, it gains a thousand attack to your damage calculation. And if Cyrus Magician is your possession destroyed by opponent's card effect, you can add any one Cyrus Monster from your deck to your hand. Before even looking at this card's effects, we have to acknowledge the inherent disadvantages it faces due to being a Ritual Monster. By definition, Ritual Monsters are almost all inherently bad, since they require you to have the Ritual Monster, the specific Ritual Spell, and monsters to tribute in order to ritual summon them. Luckily for Cyber's Magician, Cyber's Witch is a link to monster that can search both Cyber's Magician and its ritual spell, Silent Ritual, and comes with a built in reborn on a level 4 lower Cyber's monster to use its tributes. Since triggering Cyber's Witch's effect to search requires you to spell summon a monster to his own at points to, it effectively fully facilitates the ritual summon of Cyber's Magician, so as long as the total levels of the non link monster you summon add up to 7 or higher. The only caveat with Cyber's Witch is that it has to add both a Cyber's Ritual monster and Sinet Ritual. So if you happen to draw one of them and not the other, Cyber's Witch cannot individually search the one you're missing. Still, being searchable by an easy to make extract monster is a lot more than most Ritual monsters have going for them. Unfortunately, this doesn't really help Cyber's Magician's case that much, since its effects simply aren't good enough to even justify this little investment. Preventing your opponent from targeting or attacking your other monsters is technically a good protection effect, but it isn't good enough to protect you from the most popular board breakers. Cyrus Magician also doesn't protect itself from battle or targeting effects, leaving it vulnerable to a wide variety of other removal cards and effects. This can play into its floating effect, so if it's destroyed by opponent's card effect, Cyrus Magician can search any Cyrus monster from your deck and add it to your hand, which is an incredibly good effect. However, similar to Striping Partner, requiring your opponent to interact with one of your cards in a particular way isn't reliable, and is even worse when that card is face up on the field. Because your opponent can see and read what condition Cyber's Magician has, they will likely just remove it with some form of non-destruction removal in order to prevent you from ever performing the amazing search. Having any damage you take is a nice bonus if your opponent decides to take the old-fashioned route to avoid triggering Cyrus Magician's floating effect and gain a thousand attack against Link Monsters during damage calculation is a neat bit of flavor that deters your opponent from beating over with the Link Monster. But in the grand scheme of things, these buffs simply aren't enough to assert dominance over the battle phase either. Overall, Cyrus Magician is essentially what would happen if Dark Magician had a midlife crisis. While it doesn't suffer as bad from the issues that plague Ritual Monsters, it tries to do too many things at the same time without doing any of those things well. 
When compared to other Cyber's boss monsters like the arrival Cybersatic Dister and Firewall Dragon Terahertz, it becomes incredibly evident that Cyber's Magician is simply lacking in focus. Its multitude of effects are mediocre at best and are only tangentially related to each other, resulting in a forgettable wizard that simply spread himself too thin. And blazing into number 2 is Avita Rebuilder of Worlds, a level 11 monster with 3500 attack and defense. It cannot be normal summoned or set and must be special summoned from your hand while at least 8 or more link monsters with different names are on the field and enter the graveyards. Avita's special summon cannot be negated, and you cannot special summon other monsters you turn you summon the card. If Avita is special summoned, the both players shuffle all monsters that are banished on the field and in the graveyards into their decks, and neither player can activate cards or effects in response to this effect. Avita's effects to effectively reset the game without altering life points totals is strikingly reminiscent of the banned card Fiberjar. However, unlike Fiberjar, Avita cannot be responded to and does not reset itself, leaving your opponent with only their life points or whatever cards they have in their hand against a 3500 attack beater. While this effect is unmistakably ludicrous in its implications, its summoning requirement and restrictions are more than enough to prevent it from ever seeing inclusion in decks, let alone the field. Chaos Emperor Dragon Envoy of the End is a similarly massive boss monster that is both easier to summon and even more devastating than Evita, since it also rips your opponent's entire hand, and is the progenitor of the Yu-Gi-Oh! Forbidden Limited list as we know it today. As punishment for completely ruining one of Yu-Gi-Oh!'s earliest formats, Chaos Emperor Dragon received an errata that gave its effect a restriction similar to Evita's summoning restriction, and was able to be subsequently unbanned with absolutely no repercussions on either competitive or casual play. The inability to special summon other monsters during the turn you summon Evita completely ruins its playability forcing you to wait a turn after setting up its summoning requirement of 8 Link monsters in the grave or on the field to summon it. However, since your opponent can technically fulfill this condition for you, Avita could be seen as a Watchman, an emergency anti-leak staple that could sound the alarm at Konami if a Link-based deck ever gets extremely out of hand. For everyone's sake, let's hope that never happens, but the potential for Avita to move from unplayable to instant win prevents it from taking the number one spot on this list. And truthfully, at number 1, we have Binary Blader, a Link 2 monster with 1800 attack that requires two normal monsters and materials in order to Link Summon. Binary Blader gains each of its two effects depending on how many monsters it's co-linked with, or in other words, how many Link monsters whose Link arrows are pointing at its own Link arrows. If Binary Blader is co-linked with one monster, it can make a second attack in the battle phase, but it cannot destroy your opponent's monster by battle. However, if Binary Blader battles an opponent's monster while it's co-linked to two monsters, it can banish that opponent's monster after damage calculation. This card combines three different aspects of Yu-Gi-Oh that do not mesh well. Complicated combos, normal monsters, and battle-related effects. Co-linking monsters is usually a difficult task, but it's especially difficult in the case of Binary Blader due to its link arrows of left and right. Trigate Wizard is a link 3 monster with similar arrows that also gains effects based on co-linking. But unlike Binary Blader, which only gains its effects during battles, Trigate Wizard gains a powerful target advantage of any card in the field and a widely coveted Omni Negate. Speaking of effects, Binary Blader's progress from non-existent to horrendous and then finally to passable as it becomes co-linked with other Link monsters. While it's not co-linked, Binary Blader is effectively an effectless effect monster. And while it's co-linked to one monster, it becomes a beat stick that prevents your opponent's monsters from being destroyed by battle. However, once it's finally fully powered up with two co-linked monsters, it's able to banish the monsters it's battling instead of protecting them, which was actually a pretty good effect back in 2015 and 2008. In modern Yu-Gi-Oh!, Binary Blader's setup and payoffs are both incredibly slow and clunky, which is why it's a wonder that its summoning requirement somehow manages to make it even clunkier. Unlike most Link monsters, which generically require effect monsters, Binary Blader also requires you to use two normal monsters as materials for its summon. Modern Link decks could at least consistently turbo out and set up this card as a joke if it could be made with effect monsters, but requiring normal monsters specifically in order to make it makes it so bad that even meme decks struggle to make Binary Blader work, easily landing at number one on our list. Alright, and that's the list. If there are any other terrible Cybers cards you may have missed, or if you have any ideas for future videos just like this one, please let us know down in the comments below.